Okay, so obviously we wanted to chat a little bit about our international research initiative, which we launched in 2019. Um, and I just wondered if you could chat a little bit more about what we were calling for in that particular award um, and also why we were focusing on that as well. Absolutely. So with our 2019 um, international grant call, we were asking researchers to focus on refractory indolent neuroblastoma. So that is a type of neuroblastoma that uh, children typically suffer a long disease um, course. The chemotherapy is ineffective for them. They're offered many different treatments, but with no success. They tend to be older actually, um, so older children and adolescents. Um, and they eventually succumb to their disease after a really difficult uh, path through treatment. So what we wanted to do was really focus on this type of neuroblastoma to figure out what is a biological molecular makeup of this disease um, so that we can diagnose these children more precisely um, from the outset and then eventually get to a place where we can offer them more precise treatments that will um, have much better outcomes for them. So in terms of, you mentioned that a lot of the treatments at the moment, um, traditional treatments, aren't successful for these patients. So what do the other options look like at the moment in terms of clinical trials? And have they ever had the opportunity to have trials that are focused particularly on this type before? So normally children with refractory disease or indolent neuroblastoma, as it's being called here, um, tend to enroll on clinical trials that are for relapsed and refractory disease. So although we know they're uh, clinically different and distinct types of neuroblastoma, those, those clinical trials are normally set up to enroll both types of patients. One of the problems is that we don't know until after the fact that a child is suffering from um, refractory disease. So we can't tell from diagnosis what the course of their um, disease journey is going to be. So at the moment, um, the clinical trials are grouped together. But what we want to do is to separate out these groups of patients. And as far as we're aware, uh, this hasn't been done before. So we have called for a really specific research um, into refractory neuroblastoma so that we can understand what the disease is and then also what the more effective likely more effective types of treatment could be offered. So the first study that's been funded um, is being led at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia so I wonder if you could just tell us a bit more about what impact or what this study is hoping to do and the impact that that might have in the future. So we are incredibly excited about this grant award. It's being led by Dr. John Mars from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, together with um, teams from uh, other institutions in America and also with Professor Lou Chesler from the Institute of Cancer Research in London. So it's a truly international effort to really drill down on what indolent neuroblastoma is. Um, we're just really thrilled. It was a very highly... Um, scored in the scientific review of all the proposals we received for this grant call. Um, there was great excitement that this could be a, a real breakthrough for these children if it proves successful. So what the researchers are planning to do is to validate a specific test to be able to identify children up front with this type of disease to create um, more robust uh, laboratory models of this disease so that we can, um, it would enable the research community to test treatments and combinations of treatments and treatment strategies for these children um, in a more um, in a way that could predict how it might behave in the treatments might behave in the clinic setting and then finally to perform a test of combinations of immunotherapy with small molecule um, therapies so that we could by the end of this um, it's going to take two years to go through these steps um, but by the end of the two years, what we hope is that uh, we'll have a clinical trial, prospective clinical trial ready um, for children with refractory and neuroblastoma by the end of it. So we're, we're just really excited. If this research proves successful in the way that we hope that it will, it'll completely change the course of therapy for children who suffer this type of disease. And that would be really, truly groundbreaking. Yeah, absolutely. So... You mentioned about the clinical trial potential following this study, which is obviously something that solving kids' cancer focuses on. 
Um, so I wondered if you could say a bit more about how this grant call fits into our mission and strategy as a charity. So I think as we all know, neuroblastoma and high-risk neuroblastoma itself is remarkably diverse disease. So children um, face different outcomes or disease and follows different paths. Some children get into remission, some children don't, some children die very quickly after diagnosis, and some children suffer with this indolent neuroblastoma. So there is a huge spectrum of neuroblastoma even within a high-risk diagnosis. And what we want to do and um, a core part of our research strategy is that we want to break down this diagnosis of high-risk neuroblastoma into these subsets of patients so that each child um, ultimately we're some way away from this yet but piece by piece we want to get to the point where each child is diagnosed in a very precise way from the outset and offer therapy that will be successful for them. Um, the research strategy of solving kids' cancer, we want to bring these treatments into the clinic for children. So as well as understanding um, the makeup of the disease, we want to make sure that everything that we fund has a clinical end point. So what I mean by that is we want to make sure that um, whatever research is being uh, conducted, that is always with a view to what this will mean for children right now and children of the future. So offering new types of therapies, new strategies, new combinations of therapies, that's our goal because clinical trials provide hope for families and build on the scientific understanding of the disease. So we're helping children now as well as children in the future. Um, this is hugely complicated research. It's really expensive. It takes a long time, but we truly believe that this is what we have to do and the approach that we have to take in order to make a change for these children. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting as well. It's no secret that lots of charities have had um, experienced a big impact from the pandemic. And like you say, we still are committing to um carrying out these large funding projects which they are expensive and they are time consuming so um i just wondered what are your thoughts on why we're doing that and why we're still committing to that when charities are in um difficult positions in terms of finance and things like that so i think the very simple answer is that children just don't have time to wait every day, week, month, year that passes, more and more children are being diagnosed with neuroblastoma and sadly still dying because we don't yet know enough about this disease in order to make sure that every child can be treated successfully. So that gives us the drive and a passion to keep pushing forward and thanks to some really great collaborative partners that we have on our projects um, we have managed to keep funding research um, and clinical research in the face of the pandemic obviously we are all facing challenges like you've said as are our funding partners but um, we've got to keep finding ways to keep pushing the field and keep supporting and challenging researchers and scientists and clinical researchers in particular to bring new treatments to the clinic for children. So um, I think with the drive and the focus and the passion that we have together with our collaborative funding partners, we're finding ways um, in any way that we can to keep going. Mm 